All right, 4.3, solving polynomial inequalities. Example one, solve the inequality x squared minus, two, sorry, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 20 is less than or equal to 2x squared plus 14x minus 16. Hopefully, your natural instinct is to collect like terms. Collect like terms so that the highest power ha has a positive coefficient. That means everything will move to the left side. We do this, we set it to zero, and we do exactly like we did in the last, in what we did in the last unit, and we have to factor. We have to factor and find the roots that will work, the factors that will work. In our case, we want to use, so don't forget, these are the coefficients, okay, and we're going to use x minus 3. Get rid of the x, all right, and now we're going to put negative 3 times 1, all right, we bring down the 1, negative 3 times 1, and what we want to do is put a negative in each of these, so we're going to put a little negative sign on each of these, and we're going to, whenever so negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, so we change the negative to a positive, put it together, we get negative 1, negative 3 times negative 1 is just 3, so we're going to put those together, get negative 12, negative 3 times negative 12 is, neg is positive 36, so we want to subtract it, and we get 0. What does that mean? That's the remainder, therefore x minus 3 is a factor. And you don't need to put those brackets there, folks. The brackets here do not need to be included. It's just there to remind you that's one of the multiple factors. What we're left with is a quadratic. So because factoring is really a faster step than doing synthetic division again, we're going to factor that remaining quadratic. And we get x minus 4 times x plus 3 is less than equal to 0. What that means is we now need to look at this and compare the values. Remember in the previous uh, section, we had a question where it was x minus 4 and, sorry, x minus 2 and x plus 2, and we didn't know what to do with that? Well, here comes the solution to that problem. What we need to do is take our factors that we discovered and compare them against the less than or equal to zero. So we're going to create a T chart, a table. We're going to create something called a factor table. The factor table will have specific intervals, okay? And on those intervals, we're going to use test points. That's what the TP stands for. So we're going to use intervals and test within a certain interval we're going to use test points to test this factor theorem out to see what we will get. So here we go. We need to test for this. When it's this happening, then we know it's true. So what possible values will make this function 0? So let's talk about those values. One of them is negative 3. The other one is 3. And the other one is 4. What that means is in a graph, this particular function will cross the x-axis at these three values, at negative 3, 3, and 4. And what we're going to do is test the interval. So we need to test from negative infinity all the way up to negative 3. Then again, from negative 3 all the way up to 3. We're going to test the interval from 3 to 4, and then from 4 to infinity. So let's put that in our interval chart from negative infinity up to negative 3. All right, so that's that interval. Let's look at the next one, going from negative 3 up to 3. Next one goes from 3 to 4. And finally, the last one, if you think about it, so we're going to just recap again, this negative infinity to negative 3 is this interval from here to here. So what is the graph doing from negative 3 to infinity? What is the graph doing over here between negative 3 and 3? So we're looking at these values right here. The next part is between 3 and 4, so we're looking at these values. And finally, we're looking at the values from 4 to infinity. Why do we have round brackets? 
I know that you're all probably going, but miss, this has a greater than or equal to zero. We already know that at negative three, three, and four, the value is equal to zero. What we need to do is test the points that are between the intervals, so between those x-intercepts, and on either side of the x-intercept at the ends, because we need to know what the graph is doing. So before, we could just assume from looking at the equation. Now what we're doing is proving that the graph is actually above or below zero. You're going to appreciate this chart as we move on through this course, because this chart comes back to haunt you over and over and over again. So it's important to keep in mind how to do each of these questions. So the test point between negative infinity and negative 3, we need to pick a value. So it was picked that negative 4 is between negative infinity and negative 3. Between negative 3 and 3, logically, you're going to pick 0. Let's hope you would think you would pick 0. Between 3 and 4, you're going to pick 3 point something. So we're going to pick 3.5. And finally, between 4 and infinity, we just pick 5. You can pick any value you choose to be the test point as long as they fit within these intervals. The key is, is to pick the points that are between these intervals. And then what we're going to do is test these points. So it's like saying, all right, I'm going to plug in negative 4 into the question, negative 4 into this part, and what is it going to yield? Is it going to be positive or negative? We're going to have a negative value because when we plug in negative 4 minus 3, we get a negative value. All right, so negative 4 minus 3 is a negative value. Negative 4 minus 4 is a negative value. And negative 4 plus 3 is a negative value. So we have three negatives. What kind of number will that yield? Hopefully, you're thinking it will yield a negative number. So this particular interval is going to be less than 0. Let's test the next one. We're going to plug in 0 into each of these brackets. You get a negative, a negative, and a positive this time. We'll plug in 0 into here. We get a negative, a negative, and you get a positive value this time. So when you look at the final result, you will have two negatives and a positive to yield us a positive value. Let's keep going to the next one. Between 3 and 4, all right, next. If we put in 3.5 into here, we'll end up with a positive value. If we put 3.5 into this one, will yield us a negative value. I put 3.5 into here, I'll get a positive value. Ultimately, all of these values will result in a negative value because a positive times a negative times a positive will give us a negative value. Let's take the last one. Plug in the 5 into the first bracket, we get a positive value. Plug in 5 into the next one, we get a positive value. Plug in 5 into the last one, we get a positive value. And that gives us greater than 0. So let's find out which, in which intervals will yield us this value. This is what we're testing for. Well, that will be x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 20 is less than or equal to 2x squared plus 14x minus 16 when, now looking at this win value, when x is less than or equal to negative 3, because this is the correct one where it's less than 0, and when, three is when x is between 3 and 4. And that will be this one that's a correct value. Now, how come we're including it? Remember that it's less than or equal to 0, so we do include the values for when it makes 0. And this would be if you used interval notation. The symbol AND can be, you can write the word AND, or you use the upside down U symbol, which means AND. And there it is in interval notation. All right, one more. Determine when f at x is greater than g at x. So ignoring that blue highlighter that's there, we're just going to look at the blue function, which is our f. So our blue, and this is page 227, our blue function, which is f, 
and our G function, which is red. We need to note when the F is greater than the G, so the blue graph is higher than the red graph. Looking here, from here, the blue graph is higher than that red graph. Because the blue graph is higher than the red graph, it means from this point, from this to this, it is greater than, blue is greater than red. Then from here, we notice blue is under the red until we get to here. And from here, we notice that the blue gets back higher than the red and it stops here and the blue is less than the red. So all along, it changes each time. So we need to write the intervals from when blue is bigger than the red. And that will be the case as follows. F at x is greater than g at x when x is less than negative 1 and when, one, when x is between 1 and 2. Alright folks, that's the end of the video. Take care.